Hi everybody, welcome back, thanks for joining me. Today I'm giving you my first impressions on Imaginary Author's short story collection. Stay tuned to FM. Imaginary Authors are an indie perfume house in the United States and the really cool thing about this company, if you've not heard about them yet, is that their entire line of fragrances is based on the idea of imaginary novels or stories. So conceptually, it's really interesting and I love the idea that fragrances evoke feelings and emotions and have an unfolding narrative in the same way that stories do. Really nice touch. So I really want to enjoy these fragrances before I've even smelled any, and I haven't smelled any of them yet, not even sniffed one of them. This will be the first impressions. So a great idea for a perfume house to want to entice you into really enjoying all their fragrances and owning the whole collection, just in the same way that you might own the whole collection of stories of particular authors that you love. The short story collection is a really nicely presented sample set. I wish more houses would produce sample sets like this one. I'm more than happy to pay for samples. I paid $38 plus shipping for this one. And it allows you to choose eight two mil fragrance samples from their line of 13 fragrances. I actually have 12 fragrances here to test. I ordered two short story collections, one for myself and one for my mum who loves literature and loves perfume, so great Christmas present. And I don't know if imaginary authors do this every time, but I received four bonus surprise fragrances. So out of their 13 fragrances, I have 12 of them to try. So almost the entire collection for you. Let's have a look at the gorgeous presentation of the short story collection. So they all come in this box, which is designed to look like a book on a shelf. It has a sleeve here to hold it together. Opening it up and looking inside, there is space for eight two mil samples to fit nice and snugly in there. So really nice presentation and a fantastic way to really experience everything that this house has to offer. If you haven't tried any of their fragrances, then this is an ideal purchase. So I'm gonna get on with sniffing the fragrances. I won't spend too much time on each fragrance because I have 12 to get through. I don't want this video to be too long. For each fragrance, I'll read the notes and I'll spray and give my first impressions from the tester strips. And then two hours later, I'm gonna come back and talk about the dry down. So today you'll get the opening chapters and a little bit of the unfolding story. So the first one I'm gonna try is Memoirs of a Trespasser. I'm really excited to try this one. This is very favorably talked about in the community. Some of the tester strips here, as you can see, are really nicely designed to look like the bookmarks. There's a little place to spray the fragrance. Um, so the notes in this one are Madagascar Vanilla, Gayak Wood, Myrrh, Benzoin Resin, Ambret Seeds and Oak Barrels. So Oak Barrels, I think in this one is the imaginary note. Each of these fragrances contains genuine notes and there is one imaginary note. So let's give this one a spray. Wow, the opening of this one is amazing. Sweet, vanilla, woodsy. That is gorgeous. I can definitely see why the imaginary note would be oak barrels in this one. That woodsiness, really nicely blended. Woodsy, sweet, smooth, deep and rich. Opening chapters of this one are fantastic. Big thumbs up so far. Really looking forward to see how that one dries down in a couple of hours. Next one. O oh, Unknown. So the notes in this one are Black Tea, Lapsang Sushong Tincture, Oris Butter, Kyoto Moss, Musk Balsam, Sandalwood, and then some question marks. So because it's O oh, Unknown, I guess the question marks represent the unknown imaginary notes in this one. Again, a really nice sweetness coming through with this one. It doesn't seem quite as strong. It might work differently off the skin. Definitely detecting the tea note in there, the black tea. Very pleasant. I could really see myself wearing this one. At this point, it's probably worth saying that I think all these fragrances are unisex. So far, these two definitely could be worn by either sex. O oh, Unknown, really nice as well. Every Storm of Serenade, I've also heard good things about this one. A lot of people say this one's their favorite. So the notes in this are Danish Spruce, Eucalyptus, Vetiver, Cologne, Ambergris, Baltic Sea Mist. So Baltic Sea Mist, the imaginary note in this one. So Eucalyptus in this one, this could have a nice fresh 
scent and it does a really bright, vibrant, fresh vibe with this one. That is gorgeous. Yeah, a greener fragrance, a fougere fragrance. Really interesting, there's quite a few things going on in there. It smells quite complex. Yeah, really nice. These fragrances definitely aren't linear fragrances. There's lots going on in there. There are many chapters. Uh, really nice, Every Storm of Serenade, fantastic as well. So far out of three, really enjoyed all of them. This isn't really helping my decision as to which one to buy. I was going to test all these 12 fragrances and then choose my favorite to purchase the full bottle of. Um, so far, I'm gonna have difficulty with that one. The next one is the Soft Lawn. Notes in this one are Linden Blossom, Laurel and Ivy Leaves, Vetiver, Oak Moss, Fresh Tennis Balls, Clay Court. Okay, so this one looks like it would evoke Grass Court Tennis. So perhaps this could be a good Wimbledon fragrance. I think Triple Ink mentioned that in his video as well. So not to steal that from you, but um, the design of the bookmark kind of gives off that vibe, that traditional lawn tennis vibe. Uh, so we'll have a spray. Again, this should be quite green and fresh, I would imagine. Judging by the notes and the name. So the soft lawn. Wow. Yeah, and it does just that. It's bright, fresh, and you really do have that sense of freshly cut grass. I get a bit of a cucumber vibe from this one. It isn't a listed note. There's no cucumber in here as far as I know. And it may just be that it's triggering off personal memories for me. I've been to Wimbledon and I've drunk Pims with lemonade with cucumber in. So I think it's just triggering off memories of being at Wimbledon for me. The next time I go to Wimbledon, this is the fragrance I'm wearing. Next scent is Saint Julep. So the notes in this one are sweet mint, tangerine, southern magnolia, bourbon, grisalva, sugar cube, and crushed ice. Oh, again, a really enticing list of notes in there. So with the sweet mint and the tangerine, I'm guessing this one will have another quite fresh vibe going on. But there's bourbon in there as well, so that'll provide some smoothness and richness. Let's see if that's the case. Sam Julep. Really get the tangerine in this. The tangerine, the citrus of the tangerine and the sweetness in there of the sweet mint combined just fires off just really intriguing smells. There's lots of things going on in here. Again, really not a linear fragrance, really gorgeous. Wow, I'm amazed at the blending of all these fragrances. They've just done an amazing job with these. And even though the crushed ice is an imaginary note, you really do get that feeling that it would be a really cool, refreshing drink on a hot day filled with crushed ice. Really interesting. I've never smelled anything like these before. It's fantastic just to smell all these for the first time. Really enjoying this. Um, this sample set, great idea. I would really urge you, not even having tested half the fragrances yet, I would really urge you to purchase this sample set to try out the fragrances from this house. Slow explosions. Fragrance notes, saffron, rose absolute, leather, I love leather in fragrances, apple, benzoin, I also really like benzoin, cashmeran, and apora night market. Night markets, I'm guessing it's a cacophony of lots of different smells and flavors and the hustle and bustle. So let's see if that evokes that feeling. Slow explosions. And perhaps on the dry down, things will happen with this one the story may slowly unfold so we get completely different feel in the dry down, but we'll test that in a couple of hours. Oh, I get a really limey vibe coming from this one. A darker leather note in there. Wow, there's so much. It's like a, an onslaught to the sense of smell. Really interesting. Again, as with the others, complex. This one really reminds me of walking around the spice markets in the old town of Dubai which I visited on my honeymoon. Yeah, it's just so many different scents coming from all different directions, a bombardment of different smells in a really pleasant way. It draws you in, there's so much going on. With this one, it's just difficult to detect one single note. I think it's blended so that all the notes are working in balance with one another. Yeah, really uh, vibrant fragrance, uh, really quite an exciting fragrance to wear that one. Interesting. Yeah, we'll come back to that one and see if that develops in a couple of hours. We've finished with the bookmarks. We're now on to regular tester strips. The next one I'm gonna do is Bull's Blood. This was one I'm really interested to try as well. It has a tobacco note in. 
um, for the fragrances that I don't have the bookmarks for. I'm going onto my phone, if you'll excuse me, and I'm going to read the notes off the Imaginary Authors website, which at this point, I'll tell you, it's a really nicely designed website. I would urge you to go onto the website. Really simple design, very easy to find out information and notes on all their different fragrances and to order their products. And the notes in Bull's Blood are patchouli, rose, costas root, tobacco, black musk, and Bull's Blood. So I'm hoping Bull's Blood is the imaginary note in this one. So I'm hoping this is a deep, rich, complex, yeah, it is. I can smell it already. Wow. I really like that. The tobacco provides a little edge in there, a bit more of an attitude to this fragrance, which you'd expect from the name. There's a sweetness, some floral in there from the rose. Yeah, that is a really smooth, nicely blended scent. Still quite bright and vibrant despite the presence of tobacco in there. A really interesting one. This one is a very strong, distinctive smell. I think the wearer of this fragrance would have to be pretty confident in wearing this one. Not that it's a hard fragrance to wear, but it just exudes that vibe of confidence. In the same way that Black Afghano does that, it's not a similar smell to Black Afghano, but I feel that it's a strong, muscular fragrance, but sweeter than Black Afghano. Um, I'm glad I like that one. I was looking forward to trying Bull's Blood, so great fragrance. Um, moving on to the Cobra and the Canary. So the notes in the Cobra and the Canary are lemon, orris, tobacco flowers, leather, hayfields and asphalt. So asphalt being the imaginary note. I really like the sound of the notes in this one. Tobacco, leather, hay. Interesting. Let's see if we get a, a lemony citrus vibe from the lemon. Yeah, definitely has a freshness and a brightness. Lemon definitely there, but it's not an overpowering, extremely zesty scent. It's subtle, the lemon's subtle, and the leather's also subtle as well. Leather can sometimes be quite a strong note in fragrances, but in this one, it's just really nicely balanced with the brightness of the lemon. Hayfields, yep, yeah, I guess from what I know hayfields smell like. Yep, yeah, I can get that. Yeah, again, another fresh, bright fragrance. Lovely sweetness to it. And I think this one could be worn easily as a day scent or a night scent. I think most of these fragrances could actually. I think they all have enough about them and enough complexity and enough unfolding chapters to be able to wear them as day scents, formal occasion scents, evening scents. I think they're all pretty versatile. Um, on Imaginary Author's website um, for the Cobra and the Canary, when to wear is described as hot, hazy weekdays when you can put your life on hold and enjoy a simple luxury like a fast drive in the country. So a fast drive in the country, whizzing past those hay fields. So the Cobra and the Canary, really pleasant. Next one, Violet Disguise. So the notes in Violet Disguise are plum, violet, dried fruits, a balsam, amber, evening air, and the month of May. Really love the imagery that these imaginary notes evoke. Violet Disguise. Okay, I'm getting a strong note from something in there. Dried fruits, yeah, this reminds me of dates. Plum, definitely. The amber providing some depth and smoothness to the fragrance is sweet. Yeah, a really nice plum fragrance. I've not smelt that many fragrances with plum in them, so I can't really compare it to, to other plum fragrances that well, but really nice. It may lean a little bit more to the feminine side. I think men could get away with wearing this one, but for me, it would be perhaps a little bit too feminine. Really nice fragrance, definitely another one to recommend. I think I'm going to be recommending all these fragrances, so that might not be much help to anybody. And uh, the outcome of this first impressions may just be just go and buy the sample set and try them all for yourself. Um, the next one we have Yesterday's Haze. So we'll just look at the notes for this one. So the notes in Yesterday's Haze are Fig, Iris, Cream, Tonka, Tree Bark, Walnut Bitters and Orchard Dust. Never smell orchard dust, but I think I'm about to. <laughs> really like the smell of figs, so let's see if that comes out in there. Tonka-based fragrances generally are very nice scents. They're smooth and sweet. And this one is. It doesn't quite 
shout out as much as some of the other fragrances. It's a little more subtle, off the tester strip anyway. Uh, heated up by skin, it could work completely differently. The iris is working really well in this, with the smoothness and the sweetness of the tonka. It's creamy, very, very pleasant. Imaginary authors say when to wear. The seductive dreamlike quality of this scent works like a magnet. Use it liberally during the day and as it lingers into night, watch as those around you are lured into your sphere. It does have a dreamlike quality to this scent. Very pleasing. Like most scents that, that have the tonka note in there, a crowd pleaser, I think, definitely. Some of the scents, whilst really nice, are gonna be so different to the kind of scents that people are used to smelling that initially it may just take them a little while to work out whether it's a fragrance that they really love or a fragrance that they're not quite sure about. But as their nose becomes accustomed to how complex and well blended these scents are, I think most people would grow to love all of these fragrances. So yesterday's haze, great. So the next one, Cape Heartache. Notes in this one are Douglas Fir, Pine resin, western hemlock, vanilla leaf, strawberry, old growth, and mountain fog. So old growth and mountain fog, imaginary notes. Cape heartache. It's almost Christmas time, and one of the things I enjoy most about Christmas, and one of the abiding memories I have of childhood Christmases, is the smell of the Christmas tree in the house. We always have a real tree, and that that smell of pine that just seems to fill the whole house just evokes Christmas. And I'm getting some of that from this one. And the other note that comes through really strongly is the strawberry. It's very, very pleasant. Strawberry mixed with pine are two notes that evidently seem to work really well together. I'm not too sure what mountain fog smells like or old growth, but if you were walking through a very mature forest, there are very old trees growing there. There's some green smells coming into this as well. Vanilla leaf, so there's a sweetness there with the strawberry. So, old growth, walking through an ancient forest at Christmas time, looking for that perfect Christmas tree. This is the fragrance to wear. So yeah, could be a really nice Christmas fragrance. So on to the last fragrance, and this one is City on Fire. Now this one sounds really interesting. The notes in this are Cade Oil, Spike Nard, cardamom, clear wood, dark berries, labdanum, and burnt match, being the imaginary notes. Okay, yeah, this is, this is a very distinctive scent. Quite strong. Almost in the same way that the Cobra and the Canary had that muscular feeling of a very strong, distinctive, confident smell, this one has that same vibe. So a lot of these fragrances are um, lighter and bright. This one isn't bright, not in a daylight sense of bright, maybe in the fire sense of bright. There's a sulfur smell, which really does tie into the imaginary note of the burnt match. It seems funny, but the images it conjures up for me is hot dogs uh, cooking on a barbecue. Interesting, it's a darker fragrance. Don't really get the, the berries in there, the note is listed as dark berries, but I'm not really getting too much berry at the moment. It may, as it unfolds and dries down, it, the berries may come through more. And I'd just like to read off the Imaginary Author's website for this one, the excerpts from the Imaginary story is, when I saw you, all I saw was a swirl of smoke in the streetlight, elusive, sinister, spectacular. That little passage really sums up the fragrance perfectly. It could be worn in certain situations, it's definitely not a day scent. For me, it would be more of an evening scent. Let's see when to wear on the Imaginary Author's website is. So, they say the refined smoke accord makes this an austere and luxurious scent for evenings on the town, whether with a special someone or alone and looking for trouble. So if you're out in town and you're on your own and you're looking for a date, then this fragrance, for better or worse, I think would definitely get you noticed. Really interesting. It's the kind of fragrance that people will not have smelled. This doesn't smell like any kind of designer scent or a niche scent that I've smelled. So it would definitely draw attention and uh, maybe get you chatting to people. So City on Fire. Um, so far, not my favourite. 
just because it isn't quite as versatile as some of the others. But we'll come back and we'll have a sniff of the dry downs and see how everything's developed. So that's all 12 fragrances tested. I'm gonna go away for a few hours and come back and talk to you about the dry downs and which ones my favorites are. So here we are back two hours later. I did say I was going to talk to you about the dry downs of these fragrances, but after smelling the tester strips, I've decided that it wouldn't be fair to imaginary authors or to each of these fragrances to do that. I don't think they've lasted and developed on the strips uh, as well as they will develop on the skin. They're complex, well-blended fragrances, and I don't think it would be a fair review to talk about the dry downs of them on these tester strips. So what I would need to do is go away and give these some proper wear in everyday situations on the skin and then form some opinions. I did say it was a first impressions video, so I have given my first impressions. What I've also done is separated them into three categories. The first category is exceptional and I will definitely be purchasing. The second category is those that I feel are excellent and I would consider purchasing further down the line. The uh, third category is um, the more divisive fragrances or the fragrances that personally um, I wasn't as interested in. I didn't really dislike them and I would possibly still purchase them further down the line if money was no object and I was really interested in buying into the whole concept of imaginary authors and owning the whole of the fragrance line. I do believe that each bottle is designed so that when it's lined up on a shelf it'll look like the entire collection of novels. So a really nice design idea. The fragrances I feel are exceptional and I will definitely be purchasing are Memoirs of a Trespasser and Every Storm a Serenade. For me these fragrances were as I said exceptional and I think for most people purchasing these fragrances you would not be disappointed. However everyone's tastes are different, smell is subjective so do try them for yourself and don't just take my word for it these are just my own opinions. In the category of fragrances that I would like to own further down the line we have O Unknown, The Soft Lawn, Slow Explosions and Saint Julep. So really nice fragrances, I really enjoyed all of them. I didn't quite love them as much as Memoirs of a Trespasser and Every Storm a Serenade, but I still really love them. And as I say, I would like to have them in my collection at some point. And sorry, I just realized I had Cape Heartache in the wrong category. That would also be in the middle category of really nice fragrances that I would like to own perhaps further down the line. So onto the third category of more uh, divisive, uh, stronger fragrances. We have Violet Disguise, a little bit more feminine, uh, so that's why I've put that in this category. A City on Fire, The Cobra and the Canary, and Bull's Blood. So all these fragrances are quite daring, they're bold, and I think it would really, really boil down to personal preference. I couldn't say that these would be as crowd-pleasing as Memoirs of a Trespasser and Every Storm a Serenade, but you may like them. So what I would urge you to do is try these samples, try them on your skin, see how they work, see if you enjoy them. If you wear fragrances to gain compliments, see if these gain compliments. I think it would be safe to say they would definitely get attention, but it would boil down to how well these fragrances worked for you and off your skin. So I could recommend all the fragrances. I've told you which my favorites are. The sample set is a brilliant way to get your nose on all the Imaginary Authors fragrances. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think the concept behind Imaginary Authors fragrance line is fantastic. I really buy into the parallels drawn between fragrance and literature, the unfolding narrative, different chapters, the imagery and memories that fragrance can evoke. I think it's a brilliant idea, so well done Imaginary Authors. So there's my first impressions of Imaginary Authors short story collection. My favourites, Memoirs of a Trespasser and Every Storm a Serenade. Try all of them if you can, your favourites may be very different to mine, these are just my opinions. I've really enjoyed testing them, I hope it's been useful for you. Please like, comment, subscribe, don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be informed every time I upload a new video. Until the next time, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good. Thank you.